Hello and welcome to The Last Word on Spurs. We hope you're keeping very safe and well out there. Thank you for joining us on Europa Conference League Thursdays. I am never, ever going to get used to saying that on The Last Word on Spurs. I never want to get used to saying that. But I'm delighted, obviously, to be back. Thank you so much for joining us live. And, of course, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Audio Boom, across a range of different audio platforms. We're, of course, on Twitter at Last Word on Spurs. We're on Facebook and Instagram, too. And for better, for worse, as I say, you decide. We're also live on YouTube. Delighted to be joined by three very, very special guests on The Last Word on Spurs. Joined also by, first up, the returning, the wonderful Jason McGovern's back with us. Jace, how are you enjoying your Thursdays and Europa Conference League life? Wonderful, mate. Absolutely thrilling. I can't wait for two weeks' time to play whatever team we're playing in it. Can't wait. I can see you've studied the uh, the group for this one. All the research done, nailed down to a team. Well, I know we're not playing Lincoln Red Imps, so, you know, whoever's next is next. But it's wonderful competition that we're in. Oh, dear. What what an hour or so we've got in store. Also delighted to have two debutants to the last word on Spurs. First up, we've got brilliant actor Darren Hartman joining us, a.k.a. the Hartman. Darren, we need some heart at the moment. What's going on with Tottenham? How are you, my friends? You well? I'm good, my friend. I am very, very good. I'm glad to be here. And trust me, I'm going to bring as much optimism and try and find some silver linings in all this situation. So I'm that guy. I'm going to do my best. We we need you to be that guy. I tell you what, Darren, we need you to be that guy. It's fair to say, um, lots of disgruntled Spurs fans at the moment. It's, you know, it's funny, the optimism at the start of the season in comparison to, like I say, the last couple of games, it's um, it's Spurs. And that's what I can say. It, it is Tottenham, to be fair. And um, we are going to get into it. But also delighted to also to be making his debut tonight. We've got Tom Edwards joining us. Tom, how are you? How's the family? You all well? Uh, yeah, very well. Thanks, Ricky. Um, yeah, do, doing well. Um, actually quite in, enjoyed the game. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure I'm probably in a minority of one there, but uh, yeah, very well. Looking forward to to getting my spurs on. And I say we're going to be doing that over the course of the next 90 or so minutes. Well, Jace, let's start with you. Um, the, ever the, the delightment of being in this competition. Um, it's a point for Spurs in their first Europa Conference League game as it finishes 2-2 after Hoybier's late equaliser. I'm worried to say this in front of you. And Dombele, I felt, was a positive. I mean, you may disagree, but Hoybier, the master when he came on, a couple of fringe players again fluffing their lines. But overall, uh, thoughts on that performance from Spurs? Bright opening 15 minutes, then falling back to what we've seen for so often. Uh, and a second half that, you know, the, the nuisance part is losing two more players to injury in positions that we couldn't. Then having to take Kane off, realising that that's all that's left for the Chelsea game. A mishmash of a team that, you know, it sees Doherty and Davis at fullbacks. And Dombele, you're right, was probably our best player, but still not enough for me that, you know, I want to see him dominate a game, a high-level game. Um but the, the, the bits of excitement did come from him. Just, and I suppose in terms of the group, it's the most difficult fixture out of the way. So, but it, it's so hard, isn't it? It's, you know, on the, forget the Crystal Palace thing. We, we saw in Mourinho that he alluded to last year. So many of the senior players don't think they should be playing in the Europa League and they can't get themselves up. We saw flat performances in Antwerp and places like that last year. So this is an even lower tier. And then as much as you 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 sit in a press conference, say this game's important, as soon as that team sheet comes up and you see Davis and Ho um, Doherty as your fullbacks, you see uh, Ndombele recalled for his first start. You, you see kind of backup players in positions. You see Galini come in goal. That, that tells you it's not a priority game. It has that, that feeling of the early rounds of the Carabao Cup when you're playing... Newports and things like that. It's just, uh, well, we need to get games into his legs. We need to get... So the, the performance and the result is almost second secondary of importance to getting miles into legs of players. And whenever we do that, let's be honest, it doesn't matter what the competition is, we struggle to put a performance together. It's And we have done for, for a number. We, we failed to do it under Mourinho. We, we even struggled in those types of games under Poch. So... You know, when you're picking a mishmash of a side and, and like I say, you, you can talk about how important the game is as much as you want. But when you pick a side like that, you're telling the players it's a, it's a you know, it's, Chelsea is a massive game this week. So it's not a surprise that you get, 
you get a flat performance or an in and out performance where you look good for a couple of minutes and then you look dreadful for the next 25. And, and that's, you know, I think all six games will be like that, unfortunately. Darren, let's come around to you because Spurs start with a point in their toughest game, you probably would argue, in the group. And I know um, you want to bring the positives tonight. I mean, it's clear there is there is still issues amongst the squad. I think that's very clear on the eye. But I think it's good to come back for a draw after falling behind. I think that will please Nuno. Um, overall, did you see any positives out there from that performance and display from Spurs? We're going to come back around to Darren in a second. Looks like he's just struggling with Wi-Fi issues. Let's come around to you, Tom. Um, that's the, that's what it is now, Tottenham. We don't know if we'll be talking about Spurs. That's the issue of, of, of Spurs on, a, on, on these kind of shows. Uh, Tom, let's, let's come around to you. Uh, Tom, yeah. tell us, what do you think made that performance? I, yeah, I, I did take some positives from it. Yeah, like, so I thought... Absolutely. Uh, primary, um, I think when we look at what was, the mission was, uh, like we spoke Darren's about what Nuno set up the team to do and saying, <laughs> this... <laughs> and oh, we lost him there. We've lost him there. We're going to bring him back in. I'm sure he'll come back. Um, he will come back. Yeah, so look, for me, I think the positive, I mean, it's it's a double-edged sword, and you know who I'm going to mention. It's Ndombele, right? I thought there was spark from him. That back heel uh, that set up the, you know, that movement for the for the goal was like, those are those little moments that we've we've been needing. And I thought even from the start, he looked incisive. He was putting passes through the lines. He was trying to get us forward. You know, like you, you see... Harry Winks' pass map, and I'm not super anti-Winks, but you look at some of his pass maps and they're all sideways or backwards and they're not really trying to do much, you know, in some of the recent games that we've seen. And Dombele, immediately he's trying to put passes into dangerous areas. He's taking people on. They can't get the ball off him. So he's, for me, he's made it very obvious that he's got the talent that we need in that position who can make things happen. But then the double-edged sword with Ndombele is that, you know, we know he doesn't track his runners. And I think you saw that again. And, you know, for that, for their goal, for their first goal, you know, you could argue that he was at fault for not tracking back. And you do see it in the middle of the park. So he's, Ndombele really is, is, the, is the main conversation point for me in both positive and negative regards. Because we really need him. And you see those moments with him. Yeah, yeah. You're like, yes, that's what we want. That's what we yeah. need against these teams that we can't break down. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's carrying the ball forward putting it in dangerous areas, taking people on. But he's just got to work harder. I think that's all it is. I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but for me, it's just the work rate and the effort getting back. That, Tell me you've got me back, gentlemen. Tell me if you can hear me now. I, well, I can hear yeah, Darren. I can, I, we can definitely hear Darren. We're gonna come. I mean, I thought Darren, you were trying to bottle out of this. To be honest, at one point, never, <laughs> never, you, you, never. You told you told me at the start before we came on. I've got all these positives. I come to Darren, absolutely nothing, and that's why I'm <laughs> talking about this season. I'll be honest with you. But Darren, let's come round to you because um, I think the way you, maybe we can look at it is that we should always be happy with an away draw against maybe the strongest team in the group. Maybe take out the quality or the calibre of who we're playing, but it's a 2-2 result away at a not terrible French side that was playing Champions League football last season. However, there will be Spurs fans that are watching this saying, but hold on, that performance is still really, really worrying on the eye. So give us your thoughts in terms of that overall display from Spurs. I think overall, yeah, there are moments where we looked and that was not the best Spurs performance we, we could ask for. Totally agree. However, when I say about positives, we can find. Let's look at our two centre-halves today, Ganga and Roden. They're not our first choices. But for me, I'm looking at it as our future. These two gentlemen commanded their back tonight. Nothing went directly through the middle today. It was at, it was at our weak point. Davis's end, Doherty's then. That's where they found their spaces. And also because Nombele wasn't holding his ground, in and around, just in front of the back four, that's where the yeah. spaces were. But that's when you look at our was. two centre-halves, yeah, when you look at our two centre-halves, they did their job. They cleaned out headers they won. They had their positional sense right. And you go... That's a massive learning curve. Being in that stadium, being in a European trip, that's going to be so beneficial for them in the future. These guys are international. They're growing. And we've never had solid pairs in a long time. That could be a solid pair for a very, very long time. That's one positive I take from it. Nombele showed glimpses of the guy we all know, every Spurs fan, and said, that's the player we're missing. We need yep. that number 10 to link our play. When he shows it, we love him. But right now, I don't think it's about his fitness because he's had three seasons. He's had, he's had two seasons to get fit. Let's be real. He's had time to get fit. It's all up here. It's whether he yeah. wants to do it or not. And I yeah, think right awesome. now, there needs to be some serious conversations because we're wasting our transfer windows and we're wasting the moments to go, we just need to spend the money to buy him, to buy that player, that 10, who is going to give us the link that we didn't have. And if you look, the, the crazy thing about it today was, you watch their number 10, 
And this is exactly what we were missing. Yep. He did exactly what we needed. He dropped in the gap. He was in the hole. He just, the speed of passes. I think sometimes you watch our midfield and it's a speed of pass. I saw so many moments where Gil made the run, where um, Mora made the run, where Kane made the run and the pass wasn't given. So we're, we're stifling ourselves because the front three are giving you those movements. They are making the runs, but the pass isn't being seen. And I think we all can go back and talk about the missing Ericsson and all of that jazz, but we've got to do with what's there. We have the quality there in a Nombele to make it happen. If he's not going to do it, we're going to have to experiment now and put different players in there, but give them games, give them training sessions, give them moments. Until we can buy it, we've got to work with it. Do you yeah, know what this game made me notice? Like, sorry, like, sorry to jump in, but just no, going everything. forward, you say about making the movements and stuff. Actually, what I thought, it, it makes you realise how good Sonny is because I'm looking at those balls coming over the top point. and Gil is getting on them. And yes. it's like, if that's Sonny, he's running straight at his man and straight towards the goal and they've got problems. But yeah. with, with like uh, Hill or Gil, I don't know how you say it, Brian, um, he's just a yeah, little bit too light now, and he's kind of getting pushed off the ball a little bit. Um but yeah, man, it, I, I was thinking a couple of times with those balls coming over. Man, you want Sonny on it on that, you know? Like we really miss him when he's gone. Like yeah, he's, John, he's so incisive. That, that Tom, that's exactly the point I was actually going to make. That you know, it's amazing just how much we miss Son when he's when he has been available. You know, we've survived in the past without Kane, but Son at the moment seems to yeah. be the missing link. I mean. Jace, does that worry you just how much the side do seem to be reliant on Son? You know, we're talking about Kane going in the summer, but, you know, Son has stepped up in that period, as we've seen, you know, when Kane wasn't available or, what you know, wasn't able to feature. And he's really shown, you know, that he, he actually really enjoys being that main man. Um, are you are concerned about Son, just how Spurs well, look? It's it's a concern that we're, we're reliant on both, let's be honest. Um, you know, I, I know people think that, that Sonny's more important than Kane, but you're talking about the Premier League's top scorer and top assister. I mean, it's, you know, most of Sonny's goals do get made by Kane. Um, but the thing is, Sonny is the one that constantly runs behind. And, you know, we, we talked about it, didn't we, pre-season, of, of losing the goals of Vinicius, losing the goals of Bell. Delhi plays now much deeper, so he doesn't make those runs beyond Kane. And, you know, it, the problem is it, when Kane drops it, and you see it even for England, when when Kane struggles for England, when the players around him don't make the run beyond him into the space that he leaves. And that's why England can look pedestrian. That's what happened in Poland last week and that. So it is it is a big problem for us. Um, I mean, today, I, I didn't want to see Kane anywhere. I, I, Kane shouldn't even be on the flight out there tonight. Yeah. It is ridiculous that... It's not ridiculous that we didn't sign Vinicius, but it's ridiculous that we don't have somebody to do the role that he did for us last year. Because yep. that's a tailor-made game for Carlos Vinicius tonight. And then he goes 70 minutes and then you bring your Scarlet on for the for the last 20 minutes. Harry Kane, I, did, I don't want to see Kane. I don't want to see Son. I don't want to see Hoiberg. I don't want to see Hugh. I don't want to see any of them, even on a flight. Because the, the Premier League games are, are where we need those boys fit and fresh for We've ended up having to play Hoiberg. We've ended up having to play Kane tonight. It's it's just Bergwijn and Moore have now got injured through it. It's That's the frustration for it. It really is. And um, we, of course we miss Son or we miss Kane. But the, the, the goal threat at the moment is just, you know, if Kane isn't on the pitch or Son's on the pitch, you're thinking, where is a goal going to come from? And, and we, get a, we get an own goal and then... Hoiberg, you know, Hoiberg's not in the team to score goals, is he? No, but no, I think no. where is the where mm. is the dynamism, that sharpness up front yeah. that, we, that we're crying out for? And it's just not there at the moment, sadly. I, I think a point to make, actually, is that the second half when we made the changes, um, quite ironically, I've got a crazy stat here that at that point we had on the pitch, um, I think between them, it was Hill and I think it was Ndombele. Uh, yeah, Hill and Ndombele. So, Hill, four goals last season, and Dominic, three goals, were the only two players on the pitch at that moment who actually scored more than one league goal last season. And that tells you, in terms of Spurs, wow. the, you know, the real um, lack of quality in front of goal that we've got. But um, one thing that is becoming, obviously, quite uh, clear and is about the style of football. That's the big thing that's up for debate at the moment. So I just want to take a flavour of some of our listener questions that have come in. We've had over 40 questions come in over the space of the last hour. So thank you so much for getting these into us. Um, this is from NCLP, who says, from playing the best football 
in Europe to happy being to draw against a fourth best team from the not so joked Farmers People's League, that people slander. Simply embarrassing that the starting 11 should have won this game comfortably. Kane rightly deserved the move in the summer. Will Nuno follow? Question mark. Spurs 6876 says the whole club is broken. The decline I've witnessed over the last two years has been horrendous to see. Nuno's football will never be what we want to see. And Dombele, Hill, Bergvine, Kane, and Lucas all in the team. And it was still. Boring to watch. Brock Soccer Ball says, have we lost our identity as a football club? The fans seem to adhere to the principles the club was founding on, but we seem to be so far from it on the pitch. For me, this team is completely unrecognisable to the Tottenham that I fell in love with. This one comes in from G underscore Division, who says, what's the opposite of to dare it to do? And what's the Portuguese translation asking for a friend? Guys, let's, let's, let's pick up on this. Because, I mean, you, can see the, you can see the trend here. Um... Darren, let's come to you because you, I said, you know, you want to be giving us positives. I mean, with Nuno, I've got to say, you know, we're at a very, very early period into his reign. I think, you know, I can totally understand supporters at the moment that are just simply not buying in to the quality of football. And I've said this before that the problem is that at this point in time, when the football is not of the greatest quality and you are also not getting the results, that's two things very hard to be patient with. So, so where are you at the moment in terms of Nuno? And do you see Spurs progressively working to a better standard of football under him? Right now, I have no issue with Nuno. I've got no issue with, with him at all. And I feel we're on a massive rebuild right now in terms of him, Paratici. The, the whole setup is a change. Our transfer window is one in. They've had one. And the squad, we can all see... The problem. We can all see the flaws, the gaps, what we need to improve. Now, in terms of the performances, we're only four games in. And this Chelsea game is going to be huge. It's not going to define our whole season, but we're looking for sparks. Even the Crystal Palace game, with Tanganga getting sent off, even for me there, I was like, it's a different spark in certain individuals that we're starting to see. Ali talking about his, his enjoyment of playing football, wanting to play again. Now he's got to give it to us on the pitch. For me, we as fans... We, we hang our manager too quick at Tottenham. I think right now there's certain individuals on the pitch who need to start stepping up. As we've highlighted Nombele, I'm going to highlight Deli Ali. I'm looking at Bert Wine going, he needs a tap in. Once he gets a tap in, his game changes. Yeah. That's all he needs is a tap in and his world's open. Lucas Moura is doing so much work on the pitch, he just needs his goal. Suddenly things will start to click. But what I'm looking at is what is Nuno doing on the training ground to make this happen? I'm looking at the, the systems we're trying to play. He'd never had his best 11 out yet. Let's judge a man on his best 11. He's never put that out yet. Once we get that out there, I know some people go, he doesn't know his best 11. But that's what he's yeah. working out. We're, we're four games in. He's never played yeah, his centre-half. Yeah, you're not going to your best ball. 11 so early, yeah. are you? Yeah. Like, yeah. And that's right. Yeah. And he's never played his best centre-half that we paid a lot of money for. Like, there's so many elements that haven't settled. Let that settle. We're looking at some of the top four. Let, let's be real to ourselves right now. We've dropped off the top four. We know Yeah, that. We, we, we can't look at top so, four at the moment. I mean, so, you top, know I mean? Even, top so, six, even top six is a push the way it's going. Is that, <laughs> but you know when you start balancing out your thought process? Right now, we're hanging a guy because what's he done? We won our first three games of the season. Everyone was loving life. Our neighbours look absolutely people. So let's enjoy that. And mm. now let's, let's let ourselves settle. Let's let this bed in. We know that number 10 is missing from this team. Gil's coming. Let's see what he can do. I'm, I'm not hanging him yet. I'm not hanging him yeah. at all. I'm giving him chances, fully giving him chances. Tom, let's come around to you because I think with Nuno at the moment, and this again is, is what happens in, in football management, right? I mean, he did get the first three wins. He did get manager of the month in terms of the Premier League. And then obviously he got that horrendous to beat the Crystal Palace. And I know people say, well, who loses freedom to Crystal Palace? I think the problem is that when you reflect back on that Palace defeat, and then you look at the wins we did have and you look at how tight they were and the lack of possession we had. And then when you feel that into it and you just feel that, you know, I'm not obviously hypothetically, if we go on, and I don't want to obviously jinx this, if we can't lose the next couple of games, it then looks like a really, really poor start to a season. And again, I think the biggest thing that Spurs fans we see with a manager is, you know, we've seen it before with Pochettino and under Mourinho, that the worst thing you want as a manager to be reactive rather than proactive. And we saw that going to Crystal Palace. And again, I think, you want to see there's a conviction behind the team he's trying to put out there. And I think it's always a case that you want to just try and see what the manager is trying to do. If you have got a plan, if you have got some kind of principle of what you're trying to see the manager to do, then you are willing to give it time. You are willing to see it work. So far, where are you on Nuno? Because 
already. <laughs> I mean, you can see the amount of listener questions already just on the manager alone before you look at the team. Um, is it too early to judge him? Or where, where yeah. are you just in terms yeah. of him as a manager? I, no, I, I, I like Nuno. I, I think, yeah, look, we won the first we won the first three games. But for me, like Nuno's, it, it seems very clear what Nuno's strategy is, right? Which is the, when he came in, it's like get the team fitter because they were unfit under Mourinho. I think everybody knows that. They were well out of shape. So it's get the team fit, get them organised, stop shipping like toilet goals after 80 minutes, you know, and become hard to beat. Then once you've got that foundation in place, then you can start layering the attacking movements on top and start playing some like enjoyable football. But, you know, like Pochettino did a similar thing when he came in. I remember us going to the Emirates with Yunus Kabul at the back, right, and just playing literally in our own penalty box for 90 minutes. And came away with a, I can't remember if we won or drew, but we came away with, you know, we, we didn't get beat. And at the time we weren't, we weren't, you know, Eunice Kabul was starting every game. So like you have to do that as a new manager, lay, lay the foundations down. And so that's what I think he's doing. I think, you know, he is in some respects hamstrung by the squad. We, you know, we, we are mi missing that creative spark. If I'm honest with you, I don't think we've ever replaced Ericsson. If you look at Ericsson's work rate and his creativity and all the rest of it, we lost that. And we never got it back. Um, so clearly we need that spark. And we're all saying maybe it's Ndombele. Like for sure he's got a bit of that. But yeah, overall, I think that the football will come. The, the players need to be passionate about the, playing for the club. And he said good, he said stuff like, look, I'm not here to convince people to play for Spurs. Right. I, and like, I love that. And, you know, he says things I love to dare is to do. I'm thinking about that all the time. It's like he's brought into the club. He's He's made them work harder they're, they're clearly fitter like i think everybody can can agree that the team's fitter they're working harder like those first three games we were incredibly hard to break down the crystal palace one we kind of combusted a bit and and it kind of in some ways it reminded me of like like the like the battle of the bridge when we just combusted and the team went a little bit mad i feel like tanganga he just wanted to win so much he went a bit mental you know, and it's like, I, don't, I kind of don't mind that. Like, it, it, it was a terrible result and a terrible game. and We didn't have anything going forward. But the team are working hard defensively, I think. And so, yeah, for me, you judge him well after Christmas. You know, it's like, right now, get fit, stop shipping rubbish goals, and then start thinking about how you can build up your attacking play and create chances. Hopefully, with a bit more creativity, maybe Hill can come into the team and do something. You know, yeah, maybe yeah. like we are going to get a little bit more running from our forwards and a little bit more incision. Hopefully, we get Sonny back because when we've got Sonny and Kane on the pitch, every team is scared of those two. Any yeah. team in the world is scared of those two, right? That's a fact. They're two yeah. world class players. So if we've got them both fit, then I think that, that you know the goals will will start to come. Um, so yeah, overall, I think it's far too early to judge him and. Although it's been disappointing against Palace and to an extent today, I certainly don't want to hang the guy out to dry just yet. So very much in agreement with Darren on, on this one. Yeah, I mean, Jason's come around to you because um, for the for the minimal amount of time he was on the show last season, um, one of the key aspects for you in terms of Spurs was about how they would approach games in terms of there being an element of seeing front foot football, seeing there to be a, you know, that to dare to do mentality. If I read again some of the other questions we've got here, uh, Scott Hyde says, how can we move forward and improve? The Man City game this season was the first time I can remember we played well even since Poch. Really good pressing movement. Why can't we reproduce that type of performance? In my 40 odd years of supporting Spurs, this is dreadful. Uh, Jared Stansby says, do you think Nuno's job is in trouble with the lacklustre performances being put out on display at the moment? I mean, Jace, let's get you in on this. Thoughts on Nuno for you? Is it too early to judge him or can you look at what he's doing right now and be critical. Well, you know, you know full well, Rick, for me, there's there's no compromise on the style of football whatsoever. No compromise on the style of football. That's the one thing I expect. I don't expect results, but I do expect us to play front foot football. Um, in fairness to him so far, uh, we've we've hardly had... So, I think we've played one, one... And then... You know, we we can't not talk about Ndombele. You can't not talk about the Celso. They're supposed to be the two creative sparks. One of them, for whatever reason, has barely featured until tonight. The other one goes against club wishes, travels to a game that he causes to be abandoned for after five minutes, and now he's missing for another 10 days. And he's somebody that's completed 90 minutes eight times in his Spurs career. 
So, you know, when, when you're hanging your hats on those two in midfield, you know, those two have got to give us that creative spark. And you're a big Ndombele fan. I see the, the immense talent in him, but the, the downside of him, the lack of consistency of him, the lack of grabbing a grain by the real scruff of the neck in him. And I, I see the, the fancy turn on the touchline tonight and it's wonderful. But, you know, it's like a, tonight was a, as an Ndombele that it kind of feels like when you sign a brand new player like Hill we have done and they come in and you see these nice touches, you think, oh, that looks nice. But this is now year three. So it shouldn't look nice anymore. I want to see it for 90 minutes, week in, week out. And it's not yeah. just him. It's Giovanni Lo Celso. We talk about these two as being part of our three-man dream midfield because we know they're capable of creating. But when do we see it consistently? When do we even see it consistently through one game, let alone three or four games back to back? And we need we need that creativity. And the longer we we tolerate the inconsistency in them, the later we will be of finally addressing, replacing Ericsson and thinking, look, these two, the talent's in them, but they're not doing it. So we've got to move on from them. We've got to move. Or do we give them another year and another year on top? Because what do you think, it's, it's just not happening from them. I, I and, wonder. And, you know, I, and I'm annoyed at and Dombele week in, but don't get me wrong, Lo Celso, he's not there tonight, was not there at Palace because he goes away unauthorised and calls for five minutes of a game that he causes to be abandoned. And then he misses another 10 days. This is not a player that's playing week in, week out for us, is it? Nice. So the frustration is not just at Tongi, it's at Lo Celso. And, that, and Ryan says that transfer window, I've said, that cost us 140 million. Between those three players, we've seen absolutely nothing to return on it. And this is our problem that the creativity that we bought just isn't creative enough when it really matters for us. Tom, can I bring you in there? You want to ask Jason a question? I was going to say, it makes, I wonder, because, you know, and Dombele, like a lot of the time, it's not that he's not turning in performances. It's that he's not even starting because clearly the manager doesn't like him. I wonder what kind of attitude he must have behind the scenes or like what's really going on there. Because he seems to like just have such a strange relationship with the managers he works under. So well, we've said it, Tom, haven't we? You know, we don't see training every day. Yeah. But it's five managers because you have to include Didier Deschamps as well. And five right. managers yeah, yeah, yeah. have clearly not included him. So as much it as makes we you see wonder, that, doesn't it? The, what's and, happening and in training? That's why, I mean, Rick and I have the, the argument consistently with Tongi and Domley. I don't get annoyed at Harry Winks playing crap because I know that's his level. I don't get annoyed at Ben Davis being crap because I know that's his level. But you can see the ability in Ndombele. You yeah. can see, and he is so much the player we, we desperately we need. need in the team. He yeah. is what, he is our new Moussa Dembele. But when I looked at yeah. the, he the looks two, like two Dembele games, as well, when he's holding when the Wayne ball. Yama scored the rocket. And you look at Dembele's performance and you look at Dembele in Juventus in that Champions League game, completely running a game at that level. And I want Ndombele so badly to do that for us, but it's not in him or, or for whatever. It, the ability's in him, but the performance isn't or the consistency isn't. And that's the frustration why we, we cannot control games. And we've seen nice touches from him tonight. And like I said, he looks our best player, but we haven't controlled midfield. And you're right, runners are running off him and things like that. So we're not controlling games, even when he's showing nice touches. And and yeah. Celso, as don't don't you know don't don't let me just pick it on Dombele because Lo Celso is exactly the same as well. We just don't get the performances from them when it really really matters for us. It's a it's a real frustration because I mean we are going to come on to Dombele a bit more detail in terms of the game, but um, when you do see that element of quality that we have seen, it's just yeah that that consistency. I can't get away from it, Jess. As much as I absolutely adore him, um, if you can't have a player that's 90 minutes, then it's just not good enough for the club. Where we are right now, we need to have players that are going to put their body on the line. Uh, we know Spurs' level at the moment. It's not where we want them to be. Of course it isn't. So that's even more so why you need players that are playing for the calls and all, like I say, are out there fighting for the shirt. And I think in the first three games, um, despite the concerns over the style of football, there was a feeling that we're still getting the results. And like I've said before, um, the problem is when you're not getting the results 
and the performances aren't great, it leaves you feeling dissatisfied, uninterested, and almost saying, well, how do we put this right? But um, for our listeners on audio, we are going to go for a very quick break. When we return, we're getting more into the game. And of course, we're going to head to the big London derby against Chelsea to come at the weekend. And I say at the moment for our listeners on YouTube, we're going to get straight into that right now. Thank you so much for joining us as always. Um, live, of course. So let's get straight into the team ahead of this one. We're going to wait for Darren to rejoin us as well. But Tom, let's come back around to you because ahead of the game, we saw Harry Kane starting up front while Tungi and Dombele and Brian Hill got to start in the middle with birthday boy Oliver Skip also in the team to try and add some form of creativity. We'll let you be the judge of that with your thought in terms of the creativity. But with the absent Indian defenders, Jaffet Tanganga and Joe Roden got the opportunity to play together. Steven Bergwijn was back fit for about, <laughs> for about yeah. half an hour. And he yeah, obviously got carried right. off. And uh, we'll come on to the injuries later, what we've got to contend with. Um, and he was alongside Lucas Moore in the team on the either side of Kane. Youngsters such as Dylan Markandy were on the bench. And he'll also be pushing for minutes, of course, in his next couple of weeks with these um, more of these Europa Conference League games to come. But um, what did you make, John? You know with Darren joining us in a second, and he's going to be joining us in a second, if you can hear us. Um... Let's come around to you, Tom, actually start this. What did you make of the team lineup when you saw it? Yeah, I mean, it was like, I, I do like to see the players that we don't see every week in the league. You know, it is interesting to watch Brian Hill. I, I, don't, I never know what to call him, but it's interesting to see the guy because he's clearly got promise, but he's, he's far too lightweight, I think. I, he needs to put on a few pounds. He needs to hit the gym and pump some iron because he's getting bullied off the ball too easily for me. Um, and... I think that's probably why he's not getting so many minutes. Um, I think that we had an issue that Darren kind of outlined earlier around the, you know, in front of our box, right? So I know Darren was a big fan of the um, of the performance of the two centre backs, but clearly there was a there was a gaping hole there because that's where both of their goals came from, right? It was it was speculative from the kind of D area, so that makes me think. Well, we've got an issue with the midfield. Is Skippy supposed to be clearing that up, or is it? And Dombele, who's not tracking. I suspect it's probably the latter, but really there's got to be a team, an element of team cohesion not being there as well, because it it just didn't look good. You know, the amount of space that they had to kind of, you know, attack our box was uh, was was concerning. Um, but yeah, look, overall, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Tanganga, despite despite his kind of flashes of um, of, of, of anger. Um, so, it's, you know, I like to see him playing. It's good to see Scarlett come on. I think I would love to see Scarlett get a goal. Like it's so frustrating that he's, you know, he's he had that effort where he was in between their two centre backs and going in for the header. If he was just, you know, if he was like an inch or two taller, then that's probably going in. And and it's like, okay, now he's on a little bit of a roll. Now now he's going to get a bit of confidence. Um, yeah. So yeah, look overall, the the, the the one glaring issue on the team selection for me is one that Jason's already said, which is that you don't really want Harry Kane having to play in these games. You know, you don't like you don't really want him on the flight. I do completely agree with with what Jason said on that. Like Kane is basically, you know, I know we're going to talk about the Chelsea game in a bit, but Kane is basically our, our, our one hope for that game, as far as I'm concerned. You know, if Harry Kane can pull something out of the bag, then we might have a chance. But you really want him firing on every single cylinder he's got for that game. Um, and you know, with the flight, and you know, I know he only did what was it, fifty-five minutes, I think, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But still, it's still the travel, it's still the warm-up, it's still all of that. It's he's not keeping his fitness in his routine. I would mm -hmm. rather him stay in North London and keep, get his fitness, get his sleep, get his food, and just be ready for the weekend. So yeah, that's the one thing that I thought when I saw it. It's like. You don't, you don't want him to have to play these games. And I understand that he probably does because mm. he's the one who's going to get you the goal. And I imagine he was always going to come off after 55 minutes, regardless of what the score was. But it is frustrating to see him, you know, our, you know, however many million pound man having to turn up against Wren in the Farmers Conference League. Like, it is frustrating to see that. Yeah. It's, it's, been a, it's been a tough week for him, hasn't it? Because, you know, he... Uh... I think even from he scored the great goal in Poland, but he took a lot of punishment in that Poland game. Physical, yeah. really physical yeah. game. He's a physical player. Saturday, He's a physical Saturday, player. You know, he gets stuck in. He always does. He That's did. The, so yeah. Saturday, I thought he looked leggy. I think he probably needed yeah. the extra twenty-four yeah. hours, but the Saturday lunchtime definitely didn't work in his favour. Yeah, Ends up not having a shot, not a touch. 
Then, then over the last couple of nights, he's seen Lewandowski score in the Champions League, Haaland score, <laughs> Salah score, Lukaku score. Yeah. Uh, all, all the top strikers all the big dogs. in Europe score. Yeah. And he's sitting there thinking, I'm off to the checker trade on Thursday night, the European checker trade. And, you know, on the, the back of the week he's having, he must think... <laughs> You know, it's really hit home, hasn't it? The, the flip side of that is Man City have scored what five, five, and six, and still wanted Kane. Yeah, at home this I've, season. So I've got. Yeah, I'm asking around, Darren. Darren, um, I want to discuss the first goal with you because, and then Jason, you picked up as well that Kane was massively integral into that goal. Of course, it all started with that, and Don't believe back he would start the move. It ended up in the back of the net. I mean, it was Kane's first time pass around the corner for Lucas to run onto. And I've got to say, that was brilliant. That, that was brilliant, to be fair. Um, but what did you make overall of the goal? And there are you concerned at the moment with Spurs? OK, we've scored there, but we didn't seem to fade. That There's not a consistency with Spurs at starting a game that for a long, long time now, that we start a game, but we just can't seem to maintain a decent level. Can you put that down to anything? Is that yeah. down again to the style? What do you think? It it's down to the missing link of the team because we we got that goal through a moment of magic from Ndombele, a great vision from Kane, more of a doing what he does where he puts people under pressure, running at unripe pace with the ball, made the defender make a mistake with a cross that wasn't the best cross in the world, and we get the goal. Now, from that point being 1-0 up, it's about control of a game. We had no Hoybier on at this point. Skip is not ready to control a game. He's 21. He's not ready to control a midfield. He's looking at Nombele going, are you going to do it? He's like, I want to drift around and look for my moment. Yeah. And that's not going to help him. And then the game gets fragmented. It allows other teams to then build in confidence because they get the ball more. That is what is, is, is fundamentally going wrong right now for me, is in the middle of the park, we lose the ball too easy. And also, it's very easy to go down our flanks. You can see it now. We we haven't got... We, there was no very long tonight, of course. I don't really know who our best right-back is right now. And I think we're working that out as we go through. Jaffa looked great there, but I know he's thinking about bringing him in the middle. So we've got problems. We've got things we need to address. So I think that was the issue. Once we got the lead, we weren't confident enough to press because... We're not we're not that team anymore in terms of our midfield press. It's not there anymore right now. That personnel wasn't a pressing personnel. Nombele is not pressing anyone at all. So with that not happening, you suddenly go, we're going to invite the pressure on us. We're going to give the ball away easily. And I think that's where Hoybe is so important. Jace, to continue, I, I lost myself because of the internet. But when you spoke about Le Celso, I totally agree with you. He's a person I'm going, there's your window. There's your, yeah. there's your moment. Like, if you want it, that's, these are the games for you to get in, to yeah. show us what you're made of, to go, I can control the game. Let a young man who celebrated his 21st birthday today to go, I'm learning off you. That's how we control a game. That's how you yeah. move the ball around. Spot. Because Spot all the elements are there for, for Skip, but he needs that. Like He's learning from Hoiberg. He's learning how to break down the game. He does it really well now. But we know from the guy who was at Norwich, at a league down, when he, he did his championship year, he's got more in his kit bag, but he needs someone beside him to go, Go, push on now, I've got this. Or you're, you're doing too much in here and guide him through. But he's got too many jobs. And I think there's so many elements there that are right. But that's why what happened in that game is that we got the lead and then there was no general to look after the game for us. Yeah, it, like you said, I think you're spot on there, Darren. You know, th these are the games where Plaza are grass for opportunity. And that will give them the opportunity to plan the Premier League. And that's actually the frustration that there's just not enough players that are grasping it. And I just think because of maybe, like you said, Jace, at the start, it's the nature of the competition. It is that third tier. Um, I know we're going to joke and say there's a lot been a, a lot right. of third tier refereeing, but it's, um, I don't I mean, and also, Jace, I mean, the equaliser, you know, it was, it was a fine curling shot from Tate, but he's given far too much time yeah. to get yeah. the shot away. And, and again, yeah. that, that's just so frustrating, the, the lack of closing down, Jace. It is, and, you know, it, 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 it's that team tonight. It's we had the same, didn't we, in the the away leg of the the, the, the playoff round with Pacos, where we had Winks and Lacelso in midfield. Neither of them could control it properly. Winks overruns a ball. They pick a hole. I think you know it's, it's really difficult to control the games if you're not picking your best team. Um, this is the plot. I don't think we will see it in this competition. I think that's you know like Mourinho last year, as I said earlier, with those games like Antwerp and Lask and things like that. We will not control games until we can pick our best team and dominate the ball and, and genuinely create things like that. Dominate the ball, have control of the game. This, this side is not capable of doing it. It's, it's you know, players, you need the movement from, from out wide, from Davis and Doherty to give you those passing angles. That's not going to come. 
So players end up being negative. The, the, the runs from Moore and Bergwijn have got to be better, like we see from Sonny and that. And then you're right, the release of the pass at the right moment. None of those things are happening until we can get anywhere near our best team. And that's the hard thing for Nuno in terms of the style, why the boys are right. You've got to give them a bit of a chance to get a settled team and our best team on the pitch. And, but, also, and Chase, it then. but you're not going to see it in this competition. You're really not. And certainly not in the away legs. And it, it's why I've said, Rick, you know, for me, this competition, I know people say we're desperate to win a trophy and we shouldn't turn these trophies down. But I'd sooner see a complete a complete youth side go that have cohesion and understanding of how all 11 of those play rather mm. than bits and pieces of players that are, are needing minutes and bits and pieces of, of new players trying to get game time. And this person's come in from the Premier League, but I really don't want to get an injury because Saturday's coming. And, and all those types of bits and pieces, you're not going to get that fluidity from it. Hmm. What what I feel also for Nuno, remember, this is his first season with us and we're only, what, three games in, four games in now. This travel, there's so many things that you can get from it. Like, I saw something to like when he played Gill and Burt Wine together. At times, they drifted into the same pocket. They both wanted to hug the touchline together and they got in each other's way. And it's about that learning. I think not everything can be learned on the training field. And I think this tournament will allow him to do certain things with these <laughs> players to, to, to work stuff out. And I think it's safe to do it here. Like we could just send the kids. But I think it's a missed opportunity for certain players to get that extra level of learning that they could get. And we could suddenly be able to take something into our next game in the league and perfect something that we couldn't just perfect on a training ground. And I think there's so many more elements to this tournament that I think we can just use to our advantage. And I think Tanganga and Rodan are two that got so much. I think they're going to get so much from the tournament. Suddenly looking at the balance of the squad, we're going to learn more. And we could, like Ali coming on, I'm saying, Ali, you should be the general today if you want it. Like, step on the pitch and lead. He's, he's too... I thought Ali was decent when he came on. I but thought you see what I mean? Like... That general. Be the general for well, I, I actually thought that he, like, most of what he did was 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 decent. Like, it, like I, I do think that we had looked like we were a little bit more in control when, when Delhi came on. He didn't have very long, but mm -hmm. I I quite like him in that role. It's a shame because we know he's got goals in his in his locker, but... Uh, he is he is good at that. I tell you one thing, one person we haven't discussed who has certainly not made a case for going anywhere near the starting eleven ever, and that's Doherty. I, I was going to come on to, but we can we can have, have that debate now. Tom, let's get it out of the way. I mean, I thought he was he awful. I thought he was so bad. <laughs> like, <an> <laughs> hey, he got uh, Jason said he got an assist. I mean, Tom, how just how far fall how far is he falling now? The fact that you know Nuno used to manage him. You know, one thing that people did taste for yeah, but also Nuno did sell him. So maybe Nuno saw this decline coming. But he seemed so optimistic when Nuno came through the door, and yet he hasn't made a Premier League start under him. He is just yeah, playing. I mean, just in the uh, like how many crosses did he try to make that just that went that went nowhere? Like, I lost count. I, I mean, I, exactly. I saw him try yeah. to pass the ball to a geezer, but I, I can't remember who it was, but like five yards away and it, it hit the opposition. Like, I mean, it's, mm. I saw, I saw very, very um, poor passing decisions all day, I thought, from him. Like, throughout the game, I thought he was very bad. Yeah. I mean, I think the thing is with him is that the, it was more the, like you said, the service from him was just so poor throughout. And, you know, it, I mean, it was his cross that deflected into Hoybier's, uh, obviously Hoybier's path. I mean, I know Jason's going to claim that's an assist, but I mean, that, if we're claiming that as an assist, then my God. I mean, uh, yeah, David, I mean. David Bruno Fernandes is getting away. We're, we're looking for tiny little scratch, for God's it's, sake. Can't be giving him that. I'm sorry, can't be. Um, what I do want to discuss is obviously Spurs' injury crisis did struck again. Stephen Bergwijn limping off. And um, we're going to bring on to Nuno's comments later. But again, um, Bergwijn's been so unlucky. I think, Darren, you picked up on it. It might have been Tom when you said in the early stages, he just needs that one moment, even if it's a tap-in. Yeah. That'll yeah. give him the world of confidence. I really do believe that. But um, obviously that meant also seeing we had saw Lucas Moore having to come off injured after a heavy change from Tate and Dane Scarlett coming on as the man to replace him. We had Emerson also coming on as a, as a winger in front of Doherty and pushed up high to make a nuisance of himself. But um, yeah, it's it's been really difficult for Tottenham, I think, on the whole, in terms of our injury crisis at the moment. And we actually saw, you know, like you boys said, we see Kane taken off after 55 minutes. And I think that's more of a case where, you know, I don't know if it's intentional, but you just felt Rens were going to keep going for the players at one point. It was almost like we saw Bourbon go down, Mora go down, and you just think, God, this is... You had to bring Kane off, because like you said, Jace, I mean, Chelsea... 
whatever we think about how well Chelsea are doing at the moment, you know, if Spurs have got any remote chance at all in getting out of that game, we have to have Kane on the pitch, whether people believe he's disinterested or not. You know, you have to have Kane on the pitch. But um, what do we make it does, of does, but, but it, 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 it kind of alludes to, like I said earlier, Rick, no matter how, how much you can talk up the importance of a game in the press conference, we want to go there and win. When you take Kane off in the 55th minute and you're 1-1, you are sending out the message. Actually, the result tonight isn't too important. We are thinking of Chelsea far more than trying to win this game tonight. And that's that's what I mean. When, when I'm sure one or two of the players on the pitch will feel that message as well. And they think, are we really here to win? Or are we just going through the motions of it? And this is the problem with the competition. And, and like I say, this is what I fear will happen right away, particularly in the away games of the group. At least when you're at home in front of your fans, there might be, a, and this, you haven't got the travelling and things like that. They don't feel such an inconvenience. But the away, you just think so many of those players are thinking, we don't really want to be here. And it's, it's it stinks of that, that, uh, that, that whole attitude, the competition. Or is it an attitude at Spurs then, Jace? Because mm. if you take off Kane in 55 minutes and you're bringing on somebody else, you see Kane coming off. Like, we, we've all had experience of playing football in our lifetime. We all know who your best player is. He goes off the pitch. You look around and go, who's going to step up then? Mm. Who is going to step yeah. up? And I think no, of it's it opportunities like today where he comes off. If the attitude is what you're saying, that players went, well, clearly this isn't important then because Kane's going off in 55 minutes. Chelsea's our, our priority. I go, well, you're not playing against Chelsea unless you show me today that this is a priority <laughs> for you. Yeah, and yeah. It's that mentality no. of going, no, this is right. your moment. Show yes, me. And right. we, we're we're letting. We're letting people off and going, Kane's our, 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 our one and without him, there's no hope against Chelsea. Kane may come off and go, guys, give me a help. Someone help me out here. Mm, like, if, yeah. I'm, if I'm coming deep, if you're not running beyond me, then I'll stay up there and someone feed me. And there's, there's stuff that I think on the training ground and conversation that must be happening in and around this squad because there are potential. There are players here that just need a fire lit. And if Nuno can write it, let's do it. But if yeah. not, I think we've got a chairman now who looked at the structure and gone, who did has to start doing his business? If these, if Lo Celso and Ndombele ain't doing it, tell they are. Let's get you yeah, out. Yeah. Let's, exactly. let's, let's he make won't a sell, He won't sell Ndombele, though, because he won't make a profit on him. Like, I think we, I think we've gone beyond no thinking about the profit now. I think huh? we've I think, got... Uh, yeah, I think we saw it this go, summer. Yeah, we saw it go. this summer. I yeah, think we saw it this summer, though, like, with the likes of yeah. Alda Viral, with Sissoko. I mean, there's players like that, you know, Lamella even, you know, a lot of these players that maybe would have tried to hold out for a higher fee. I mean, Aurea, we tore his contract up. You know, well, yeah, that. That, but yeah. I think Ndombele, because he has such potential and because he came in for such a high beat, like Lamella, uh, 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 players like Lamella and Alvaro, they were getting on, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. We, we were never going to get a big fee for them. But, no, but I think in, in previous summers, I think Spurs would have tried to command a bigger fee for those guys. I yeah. might be wrong, but I, I do think... Yeah, I, a... I think that's a fair point. I do. Well, I, I still think the point think... Out about Ndombele, though. I think it, it, I also it... think with, with, with Tongi's situation, it's slightly different. Susoko's contract was a year to go. Toby had a year to go. Oria had a year to go. Tongi's still got, what, two, three years to go at 200 yeah, grand a week. Very high wages. So I think even if Daniel would leave, he was to say, OK, I'll take 25 million for him. He doesn't want to take 25 million and subsidise his wages. Mm. Oh, because he's not earning 200 grand a week at any other club. Either. No, no, no. That's, a, if, that's if probably, him, that's that's probably the more decisive factor, actually. If, isn't I it? Leave, no one's gonna, fine. No one's if, if I've got to wash my hands of him, fine. But I'm not going to wash my hands of him and still be paying him Hundred grand a week to go somewhere. That's yeah, that's yeah. the problem you've got with Tongi. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what I do want to pick up is obviously Mora having to come off injured. I've, again, I thought Mora tried in 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 parts to try and look bright. I mean, Scott was the man to come and replace him. As Oriel, um, sorry, as Emerson Royal came on to replace Harry Kane. Um, Emerson came on as a winger, trying to make a nuisance of himself, but without really the final ball. Again, he's coming there to play back to back games. I'm sure he would have preferred to have a more settled period. Um, and of course, of course, we discussed Nor more. Nuno having to take off Harry Kane at 55 minutes to try and rest him ahead of Chelsea. But um, what I do want to discuss, we've discussed about the lack of an alternative to Kane, and that's Dane Scarlett coming over to you, Darren, because um, 17-year-old, um, he had very little service, but also struggled to stamp his authority on the game. I mean, it's another learning experience for the teenager, but are these the games that you want to see Dane Scarlett start? Because otherwise, why is Dane still at the club? Why is he not gone out on a loan for that experience? I totally agree. I think these games are games where we've got a, it's the management of him. And I think today's game, I think the, the idea was to get the lead, hold the lead and bring him on where we didn't have to have pressure on him. Yeah. But he got a different pressure today. 
when he came on, the game changed on him. Suddenly we went into we were losing the game when he came on. And like it all changed. And it's about what he what he learns from that. And I think all of this is going to be massive for him. And I think he's going to get more minutes and he's going to get the, the he's going to get the cup games and he's going to grow. Obviously, he's not the backup striker this season. I don't think anybody in their right mind is expecting him to be the backup guy. I think we're rotating that between Mora, Sun, Burt Wine, all of those guys, mm. they're going to be looked to the community to try and get these goals. But I think what he's getting from being in and around the first team, learning from, that was a physical game today as well. Like you spoke about that head of Tom where he got squashed between the two. Yeah. That's yeah. a massive learning curve for a 17-year-old because these guys, they were playing Sunday League at times. We had Sunday League refereeing as well. It got rough out there. And he's going to come off that pitch with the bumps to bruises and go, what did I learn from that? Nuno's going to hold him and go, this is what you need to look at. Where's your space? Where are you running into? He's a bright prospect. And I think yeah. managing him well, today was well managed, but I want to see him start against whoever's next, as you quite rightly said, Jace, whoever's next in a couple of weeks, let him get let him get more minutes because it is a good place to blood him in. It really is. Yeah. Uh, I think, with, him, Rick, I think oh. with, with Scarlett, you know, when you look at young players, particularly forwards now when they come on, they, particularly at his age and physicality, I, I mean, you compare it to a, a slight degree with Mason Greenwood, if you like. There's a young player that's burst onto the scene. But they, they, they kind of learnt it, and in the same way Rashford did, one of the wider of a front three positions, not playing as the main number nine single man up front, where you will have to play with your back to goal and things like that. I think, you know, Vinicius, playing off of Vinicius, we saw him come on, didn't we, in one of those games last year, yeah, when he yeah. had Vinicius up front with him. Just for Vinicius to almost be the battering ram, take a lot of it and let him pick up alongside him, which is how Greenwood came into the side for Man United. And I think he'd benefit playing, not that I want to see Kane in it, but if you'd still had Kane on the pitch, it would have left that little bit more space for him to get his confidence up. But trying yeah. to play him as the out-and-out out number nine at the moment at 17, we saw that problem, didn't we, with, with Troy Parrott when he came on against, what was it, Norwich in that cup tie, didn't it? The same yeah. type of thing. It's very mm. difficult for them. They, they need they need starts, they need game time, but you've got, to, you've got to put it where it's not quite as much pressure for them, where they can feel their way into it, and where, where their weaknesses aren't quite as exposed as... As, as what it will be in those positions. Yeah. Tom, I want to come around to you and ask you about um, the goal that took Renz ahead. Uh, Galini pushed a shot from outside the right box into the yeah. path of Labordo, tucked it away. Um, I mean, he hasn't really had much game time so far, Galini. He's going to obviously have these cup games. We assume he's going to play next week against Wolves, of course, in the Carabao Cup as well. Obviously, I think we, had, from our understanding, speaking to Alistair Gold, who we had on the show a couple of weeks ago, um, at the moment, there's still a bit of unsurety in terms of whether it's 20 Premier League games or whether it's 20 competitive games that actually trigger the option for Spurs to buy him. But from what you've seen of Galini today, do you have concerns over um, him potentially replacing Aris as number one? Yeah, well, a bit. Yeah, uh, well, you know, that, it, that um, second one. It, I mean, it looked like a spill, really. Uh, you know, it, 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 it wasn't good. Um, and yeah, look, the thing is with goalkeeping, right? We've been spoiled for many years having Hugo remain loyal to the club and being, you know, being such a top quality goalkeeper that he is. Like we, we haven't had to really think about goalies for, for quite a while, right? We've had a few kind of, you know, uh, co coming and going like Joe, <laughs> Joe Hart being like inexplicably turning up for a while and then disappearing again. Um, so it's a difficult one. He's got really, really big shoes to fill. And the thing about goalkeepers is that, you know, in, in some respects, similarly to, to, to centre forwards, it's like it's a, it's a high pressure job, you know. And if you if you mess up, it can really destroy you mentally. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's a funny one. He didn't look good tonight, I don't think. Um, but it's like it, we, we would have to see more of him to to really make a make a judgment but if you're not looking great against Ren then how good are you going to look against Man City if you're starting in the Premier League right mm. and this like, is the key, you know yeah. if you're going to be facing a lot more um you know tougher decent uh, yeah, yeah like yeah. You're, you're going to have tougher te sterner tests than that and the other thing as well about you know um uh, about the keeper is that you do expect your goalie to be organising the defence as well. And we did have these gaping holes in front of the box. So, like, you know, obviously, as Jason says, we don't see what goes on in the training ground. But should your goalie really be saying, look, you need to be pushing into that space? If there is if there is space there, do we need to be, like, uh, more have a, have a more 
reactive, responsive back four because there were gaps, you know. And like I do agree that you know Roden and, and Tanganga they had their good moments and that there were some good tackles in there and some good headers, but we didn't look cohesive. And honestly, at the back you do need that kind of direction as well. So. Yes, he is a concern for me, honestly. Um, you know, it's early to judge. I know it's early to judge, but yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm not convinced right now. Darren, like your him. opinion on that? Do you like him, Darren? Yeah, you like I him? like him. I, the reason why I like him is because I think there's so much growth in him. And as a shot stopper, like what the, the goal, it was big hands. He got big hands on the save. And I think sometimes we need to look at that because. Uh, as much as Hugo's great, sometimes Hugo goes soft hands. And that always used to worry me, like the light punching and stuff like that. Like, I'm watching his keeper learn and I'm watching mm. him develop. And I think there's potential there. His distribution of the ball is pretty good as well. And I think that is, that's yeah. a good yeah, selling that's point. That's what they're thinking, keeper. isn't it? That's yeah. what yeah. they're yeah. thinking. So, can, can you, yeah. i got to ask Darren on your point there. Yeah. Can we afford to have a goalkeeper that's learning on the job at Tottenham? Because of the nature <laughs> of the Spurs are. That's what I would say on that. You know, you know what? <laughs> Because of how everyone else is, Ricky. Yeah, everyone, to be fair, everyone's been doing it the last. Everyone's been doing it the last ten years. All I'm worried about the is my point. It's a great choice. There you go. You you you've done it for me. You know. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like as a fan, we're still learning on the job. I got to be yeah, honest. With yeah. You. Well, well, Daniel Levy's still learning on the job. How long's that taking? Jesus. I'll tell you. But even Darren, you you think long term, it, it could be Larissa's success. You generally believe that? If you look at the goalkeepers out there, I think he's a great prospect, and I think he's one that. Definitely can settle himself down. Definitely has got the ability to grow. And that's what I'm looking at. It's not like he's come from a league where he's not played. He's played games. He's been a number one. He knows what it is like to be a number one. So he's got this season to learn with Hugo. He's got that time to really get in there. And he's hungry. And that's what I've learned from goalkeepers. If you don't want to be number one, there's no point being there. And we've had too many keepers happy to be number two. He doesn't want to be number two. He wants to be a number one. So let's, let's see if he can prove his mettle. Yeah, I've got to agree that point there before we actually go around to our Jason. That, um, everyone everyone has a project at Tottenham. I think it's fair to say, even as fans, it's a project of tests, isn't it, really? How much more can we put up with it? Right we, we come back every week. Uh, Jason, just get your thoughts on Galini there. I mean, of course, he's still finding his way into Spurs in terms of being given opportunities. Um, from what you've seen in very, very early days, I thought you played ever so well in that friendly against Stanford Bridge. Again, the problem is it's the word friendly. It's not a competitive game. Um, are these the games where we need to see and grasp the opportunities to give us the confidence that he can replace Lloris long-term. Because whatever you say about Lloris, I know there's, again, he's um, critics out there that his distribution has been poor. But what you have to say is that if you look at Lloris's time at the club, he certainly saved us more points than he's cost us. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you, you don't have to tell me about the, the, the ability of Hugo. I've always been a massive fan of Hugo. I've, you know, it was a thing I see in the week. Um, I, I hate that's that XG, but it's how goalkeepers are measured. I think there's only Oblak in Europe with a better save per XG than Hugo. So, and I've always said, yes, there's times where Hugo, you look at him in games and think Hugo could have done better. Mm -hmm. But for everyone he's doing that to, he's making five or six saves more than any other goalkeeper. And so, yes, you can pick somebody, you can have Gazaniga. I won't make that mistake. But if there's six goals going in while he's not making that one mistake, there's five goals, yeah. you're worse off. That's that's the thing with a goalkeeper. I yeah. think with Galini, no, he had to do better with that tonight. He's got to look solid in these games because if we have brought Galini in with a view to being a number one goalkeeper next year, at some stage before Hugo reaches the end of the season, you're going to have to see Galini play Premier League games to to give you that that real you understanding. So he's got to look you. solid I now. To. Yeah, I can't and agree. then after Christmas, when you're yeah. playing Liverpool at home. Mm. Or you're going to have uh, Arsenal at home or something. You're going to have to say, can you? Can, are you good enough in a big mm. game like this? Because if we're going to let Hugo go and you're coming as our number one goalkeeper, I want to be sure. So that that to me is the concerning time. That as the season goes on, when you start to think, are you going to play Premier League games or not? And for me, I still see so much. I, I think it depends on where Hugo wants to be. For me, I'm happy to have Hugo as our number one goalkeeper next year. I don't think Tottenham will get a goalkeeper as good as Hugo Lloris for a long, long time. No, so I if agree. Hugo, if I sat down and said to Hugo, do you want to stay here next year? Do you want a contract for next year? And he says, yes, fine. If he says no, then reluctantly you have to leave. I think Hugo's earned the right to make his decision for next year himself. But yeah. in which case, if Hugo's not around next year, you've got to start showing Galini genuine game time in the... Not now, 
But as the season goes on, he's going to have to play Premier League games. He's going to have to go to Leeds away where the crowd are on your back and test yeah. that mentality. He's going to have to play some big ones, not just Burnley at home where, where he might only have to make one save in a game. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a fair point. Again, like I say, I mean, with Galini, we are going to hopefully see him play regular games. I mean, I take Wolves away in the Cup, where for me, that's a really important game, Wolves away in the League Cup. It's, Good one that, for him to that, have, that, yeah. I mean, that is, is going to be a real pressure cooker because the Wolves fans will also want to see their team progress. And like you say, with the fans' pressure there, that's not going to be an easy atmosphere to him to handle. But um, Spurs did get level. As Jason said, a masterclass of an assist for Matt Doherty in there to, <laughs> to, to, to bring Spurs level. But Hoybier, I mean, we've got a question on him. But um, overall, again, he was rewarded with the goal. Um, he drove the team on and was actually constantly speaking to Espirito Santo, trying to get his message to the players. And just on that point, Darren, we've got a question in here from Mark at Mark19SR. He says, how long until Hoybier is our captain? Telling players what to do from the bench, then coming on, telling them where to be, what to do. Harry wasn't doing any of that. Give him the armband. What's your Listen, thought? Will Hoybier be your captain? 100% he'll be my captain. For me, I don't like my goalkeeper or my striker being a captain. I've never been a fan of that because you're too removed from the game. As a goalkeeper, you're too far away. The striker, you're too far away. I like my centre midfielder or my centre half to be my captain. That's always been my thing. And I think Hoiberg, he's got everything that I would want in my captain. He he shows it in his performance. He also is vocal on the pitch. And there's those two elements of a player is I think they're great. And he's he's a leader. He's pulling players around. He's You can see when he scores a goal, he, the way he celebrated today, he knew what the fans were doing. He knew what the players needed. But also, he's there for Skip. He's there for Winks. He's there. Anyone who's around him, he's there for him. And like you quite rightly said, he's listening to what he's being told off the pitch. He's telling the guys on the pitch what to do. For me, absolute natural born leader. And I think down our core, we need that. We need the leaders in there. And I think, I, I, for me, I would give him the armband next season, absolutely. I would slap it on him. I'll give it to him now, but I don't want to upset yeah. everybody else. But yeah, next season, I'd absolutely slap the armband on him and go, my friend, lead, take us forward. Yeah, it's funny. A lot of people don't agree with me in the comments there. A lot of people agree with you that, you know, for now, Hoybier should be the captain. But um, a player I want to ask you about, Tom, I know Jason's had his son in many, many times, and that's Deli Ali. I mean, this season, again, uh, with Delhi, there's a, a mixture of different opinions on him. Obviously, he's learning a new role. Some feel that you've got to give him time to learn that new role. Others feel that the role he's actually doing for the team isn't really beneficial. They probably see that. And Dombele, if, like Jason has always said, if we can get him to do 90 minutes, he's probably the man to come in and suit that formation better as opposed to Delhi. Um, what did you make of, of, of Delhi? I mean, he only, only had a couple of minutes tonight, but... Where are you on Delhi? Is it time to move on? Or do you still feel there's that player in there those first couple of seasons where still it's not right to give up on him? Oh, you can't give up on Delhi. You can't give up on Delhi. A hundred percent no. What, like... what do you say, Tom, to those fans that call you sentimental when you say that? You can't give up on him. <laughs> I know a very good you know, I know a very good friend of Darren's, you know, um that you know, in terms in terms of you know, with Delhi, he he's a man that I, I know for some He's had his opportunity here. And again, it's a real tricky one, but you still feel we can well, get that Delhi back. You, but it's not like it's, it's not like he's a Los Celso where it's like he's turned up and done nothing and 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 still is still kind of there hanging around, you know, and we're waiting for him to do it. We've seen him do it, you know. But peak potch Delhi was formidable, you know. I mean, he was he was brilliant, and I, I think there's a real talent in there. The problem that um that, that Delhi's typically had i think is that he he doesn't take things too seriously um and it's a it's a mentality thing he was always kind of a good time guy and you know enjoying himself and having fun but then he'd lose his head a little bit if things weren't going his way i think this summer you saw on social media and all the rest of it like he, he spent the whole summer training right and he came back looking like like a unit like he's looking fit he's looking strong and i think he's working harder and i think you see more of that from him on the pitch he looks like He's taking things more seriously. He's, he's he's breaking up play. He's getting stuck in. He's you know he's not trying to do Cruyff turns like in dangerous areas for no reason. Like he's he, he's he's doing the dirty stuff. And I think actually that's quite good for him. I think we're giving him a little bit more responsibility to take life a little bit more seriously. And I think that we're actually seeing a good side of Delhi. Um, the one the, the one issue with that obviously is that he gets you goals if he's a little bit further forward. Like he can score goals. And right now. 
you know, yeah. like it's we're relying on on, on, on Hoiberg yeah. to, to get us our, uh, yeah, our equalizer. It's like, that's yeah. a problem. But yeah. yeah, for me, I like Delhi there. I, I think um, as the season goes on, I hope he gets yeah. minutes there. I think he will. Um, and I think, you know, he's got great talent on the ball. He's got a great touch. We know he has. We know he's got natural skill. We know he's got natural talent. Um, yeah. And we've, we've seen that over the years. So, yeah, absolutely. I'm a, I'm a big believer in Delhi, and, and I think he will succeed in that in that midfield role that Nuno's got him in. I've always, funny, said, Tom, I've always uh, said with Delhi, oh, it's, it's yeah. the, the timing of his runs when we're at our best, and we we're, we're thinking back to the Ericsson when Son and Kane, and he's able to form those partnerships with Kane. Yeah. When you when you actually look at Delhi's catalogue of goals, there's not many great goals in there. You know, the vast majority Movement. is making that run and getting almost poachers type goals. Yes, there's the, the one at Palace and there's that lovely top corner curler against Watford. But the vast majority, I mean, you looked at the Watford away game that year when in the 4 0 boxing day, they're both like three or four yard tap ins because he's he, he likes a half volley as well, so doesn't he? He likes yeah, a, little, but, a little dinkaroo. Little, but, um, but, I mean, you look at Sonny's catalogue of goals and, and you could have 40 yeah. goals of the season on there. They're amazing <laughs> yeah. goals. But yeah. Delhi's, Delhi's never been like that. He's, he's a player that arrives in that six yard box, gets his tone, almost like Hoiberg did tonight. Hoiberg's yeah. goal tonight is a typical Delhi Alley style goal. Arriving in the box at the right time. Arriving yeah. with that timing and just yeah. getting the tap in. And yeah. he's done that throughout. He's got far more probably six-yard box goals than, than even Harry's type of got. It, you just mm. feel that with Delhi, And we've got to get him making those runs and into that position. I, th I mean, even last year, it was the one Premier League goal was, was at Fulham away, or it became an own goal. But even that was a on the edge of a six-yard box with a timed run. And I think it flipped off the defender's foot as well, didn't it, at the same time and went yeah, in. But yeah. that's the type of Delhi Alley goal. And and we we miss that in our creativity as well, that timing of the run. And his yeah. Delhi at his best makes that run. That's that's the thing. Yeah. We haven't yes. seen that Delhi for so long though. No. And I, I I wonder whether like his game is gonna have to mature because that side of Delhi we like when, what, you know how long ago was it that we last saw Delhi like ghosting in like that and making we're looking at, like, we're looking at we're looking at three seasons ago, Tom. Well, it's, right. it's, it's not, is it? The, the strange thing is, and of, and of all the talk of Mourinho, that that very first moment when Mourinho came for mm. that first six or eight weeks, he relied on Delhi hugely because Delhi yeah. scored a lot of goals in that time. In, that, in that first period. Yeah, scored he did. a lot of goals in that time. Scored Norwich, yeah. scored Brighton, winner against yeah. Brighton, scored that fantastic goal at Man United when. Mm. from close in but when he flicked it That's over great, the top great finish. Yeah. Uh, was, was, was that wonderful little assist at West Ham was it the flick yeah, the touchline yeah. and Dom yeah. you know Delhi was a big player and then we lost Kane and we lost Son and he ended up playing Delhi almost as our, as our main striker against Norwich yeah, yeah. I think against yeah, Norwich was... and against Leipzig yeah, with his yeah. back to goal and Delhi came off threw the boot down and from that moment on I think he was dropped for the next game. And from that moment on, Delhi seems to have had the problem. So yeah. it's strange. But under Mourinho, the start of Mourinho's reign, he really relied on Delhi. Mm. Yeah. yeah. He, can be, he definitely can be. I think what we've got an issue of is two things. Delhi, if he wants it, then yeah. Delhi could have it. But yeah. secondly, we're talking about this late arrival in the box, the poacher type goals. If Delhi runs, who is passing him the ball other than Harry Kane right yeah. now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the other the, problem. Okay. Yeah. So right now mm. he's trying to adapt his game and Nuno's trying mm. to adapt and we're trying to fit this this jigsaw to work. If yeah. we can set him we free... Haven't even got, we haven't even got Aldevaro popping them from, uh, from the other no, side of the field. I mean, that, we? that, <laughs> that we've got to look at those fundamentals of go long or I, I see your run, I'm definitely going to get it. As mm. we know, as, as if you're running and you're not getting the ball, you stop running. Yeah. And yeah. Delhi's in a situation yeah. going... Who's passing it to me? Now let me try and win it early, be a breakdown man, and I'll I'll try and give it to you, Harry. That's what I'm trying to do right now. And I think there's a whole change in the system we're trying to figure out. And one day we may be able to set Delhi free, or he has to go. Yeah, it's a good point you say that. I mean, again, in the comments here, I can tell they're going mad. There's, there's some that, again, like us, uh, that are holding on to the hope Delhi is going to reclaim those first couple of seasons. As Jay's mentioned, that early under Mourinho, there's some that just feel he's finished. But um, one player I also want to mention in the midfield is Oliver Skip. Now, um, the birthday boy, actually, Oliver Skip, played that ball, a quick one to Kane in the build-up for Spurs' opening goal. I mean, he worked hard in the centre of the pitch, but struggled to keep his composure with some of his passing. Now, I think it's the iron, isn't it? At the start of the season... Skip was getting absolutely rave reviews from Spurs fans in terms of how he was playing. 
a few bad results, he's then being likened to the next Harry Winks. And again, you know, I'm not saying anything is always right, anything's always wrong. There's always a thing that it's somewhere in the middle. Jason, start with you. Oliver Skip, um, do you? I, I, I'm going to be honest, I, I think he's a better footballer all around than Harry Winks. Is Oliver Skip enough to get Tottenham back to where they need to be with an all fit midfield? I'm not too sure. I, I think he's a good enough squad player. Um, is he maybe going to be starting my team every week when everybody's fit? I'm still unsure about that. Where are you in terms of Oliver Skip, Jace, long term? I'm nowhere with Oliver Skip. I just think the boy needs time to play, time to get experience, time to learn the game, uh, time for him to come in the game, play a few games, time for him to step out for a few games, time for him to sometimes to come on for the last 20 minutes of a game. The boy just needs time. It's far too early to judge where he'll be next year, where he'll be in three years. Just let, don't put any pressure on him. I don't, I don't like the pressure at the start of the season when we're, oh, we've signed this, you know, he's come back from Norwich. He's going to be better than Winks and all that because Harry Winks looked a really, Harry Winks looked a good footballer when he first came into the side. So let's just, you know, I, I say that with young players, let's get to 50, 60 games with them before we really start. You, you, he's, he'll have good games, he'll have bad games. There'll be times when you think, I mean, he's, he's lost control of this. There'll be times when he, mm. he grabs a yeah. game. Let's, yeah. you've, you've just got to go through that, that up and mm. down curve with him. And that's why I say I'm nowhere with him because I don't want to make a judgment on him yet. We haven't yeah. seen the best of him. We haven't seen the worst of him. Let's, we haven't even seen an average level yet. We've seen no, so a, little of him. It is Let so hard. the boy grow. Yeah. Let yeah. the boy grow. But what's important to him is to have, and I think uh, Darren said it earlier, he needs Heiberg maybe alongside him. And he needs either La Celso or Ndombele week in, week out, a good one of them, so he can concentrate on his own game, make his own contributions in his own little way and go there. He can't. He certainly can't be seen as a main man at, at 21 years with, what, four Premier League games under his belt or five yeah. games under his belt. That's, that's so unfair on him. So just let the boy develop and let's judge where he is come the end of the season has he done enough to say he's had a promising season I want him to be a young player of the year at the end of the season I don't Great want him point. to be our player of the year at the end of the season just let the boy go yeah uh, just quick points uh, Tanganga I mean I think I say it's some uh, nervy moments early on in the first half particularly but did improve as that game wore on Joe Roden the more composed I think of the central defenders on the night and dealt with much of what came his way and Joe Roden depending on how what we see with Spurs and the injury crisis could be in that team for Sunday to come before we look ahead to Chelsea in a couple of seconds I just want to pick up on Brian Hill Darren just to ask your opinion of him because um, I think it's a, a, a tough night for him but he's generally one of the few players in our team right now that is trying to make something happen when he does get on the ball. Have you got some real hope for this lad this season that, you know, we're going to see some real exciting flair from that's going to light up, hopefully, the White Hart Lane? I absolutely do. But I think Nuno's got the same issue that we've all got in here. Where does he play? And I think that is the thing. It's trying to find his best position. He's not the strongest of lads. He is getting pushed off the ball. You saw that happen a lot today he did it'll run in it'll cut back in and just get pushed off the center half just weighted him off the ball and that's going to happen he's going to win free kicks in and around the box but where is his best best position who is he going to learn from this year because I'm, I'm putting him in the same box as Oliver Skip I'm not expecting him to be the worldie this year I'm expecting him to start getting minutes, getting game time, finding that position. If it's Son that he's learning from, learn from Son. If who who is he who is he coming in to learn from, so that we can go? He can take over because he's got the ability to. Um, I'm loving the flashes. I think Jason made the point of when you see the moments, you get excited. There were moments today where I got excited, and I'm glad to see those. I'm glad to see he's he's running with the ball, he's turning the pace. Also, the passion. He wants to be there. And he wants to win. And I like that in a young player. I like a player who wants to wants to win, and he, he's up for it. So yeah, he's excited me, but I'm not putting any pressure on him. No pressure yeah. from me, none at all. Yeah, I mean it's funny. I got a question. I got Mark saying here, probably best to skip the Chelsea preview. Unfortunately, we're bound to do the Chelsea preview it's regulation here on the last one. I suppose I'm sorry, sort of put you through that, but we are going to be looking at Chelsea in a minute or so. Uh, before we do, Tom, I just want to finish up on Dombele because um, I know we had that big debate on him earlier. But I think he definitely showed, just to go back to him for a second, just that, just the value to like having him in the team. Because I think, again, along with Hill, he's one of those players that does have that bit of industry, that bit of skill. Again, it's key. We're going to talk about Chelsea in a second. He just has to find a way, doesn't he, Tom, of getting into that first team and making himself established now in the Nuno. And winning him back round, I think with Nuno, what he's going to want is to have trust in players. And it's whether, like you said earlier, Tom, can he convince Nuno that he can do the job 
that he sets him to do. Well, yeah, I mean, look, there's 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 one thing that he's got to do uh, to impress Nuno and get in the side and impress us and get in the side, and we all know what it is. Hard work, that's it. Just graft. He's got to graft more. He's got to run more. He's got to cover more miles, and he's got to track his runners. Like, he's got to do the stuff that he doesn't want to do. You know, he can't just be doing the nice, showy, fancy stuff. Like, he's he, he's got to work harder. So, for me, it's pretty simple with, with Ndombele. We know he's got talent. We know that he can make things happen. We know that it's impossible to get the ball off him if he wants to be that guy in the middle. He's got shades of Dembele about him, I think, when you see him, like, you know, throwing his weight around and, and keeping the ball. It's, it's almost magnetic. Like, it's amazing to see. But he's just got to work harder. Simple. And I'm sure that's what Nuno will be saying to him. We know that Nuno values that, you know, above almost all other yeah. attributes is, is, you know, effort, work determination, rate. hard work. Yeah. Yep. So that's it. It's simple, I think. Yep. No, it's, it's fair. Absolutely fair. No, that's right. Well, guys, it is that time. Um, for our listeners that are on audio, we are going to go for a very quick break. Taking into this break, we've got a great preview, actually, from um, the Chelsea fan cast. We've got the wonderful Chidge joining us, who's going to be giving you that preview. And you'll be hearing that right now. For our live audience on YouTube, there's nearly, I think, nearly 450 of you watching this. Thank you so much for joining us on a Europa Conference League night. What are you doing with yourselves? I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Keep on waving. Thank you so much. There's no red button to go back and watch this, unfortunately, but you can watch it straight after the uh, after the game. Thank you, as always. If you're not already subscribed, what are you doing? Please hit that subscribe button. And it's time to look ahead to Chelsea. My God. Right. OK. Darren, let's start with you. Uh, five matches in all competitions for Chelsea. Four wins, one draw, ten goals scored, only one conceded, and that was a penalty. <laughs> I think it's fair to say Chelsea had picked up right where they left off last season under Thomas Tuchel. And as they look to continue their impressive run away at Spurs, um, Darren, honest thoughts going into this one. Do Spurs stand a chance, bearing in mind your optimism you've brung to the show this evening? Listen, we always stand a chance. Football is, is a game of minutes and moments, and we, we always have players like Harry Kane on the pitch who can create a moment. The thing about Chelsea is they've got Lukaku now. It, they're a different beast. They're an absolute different beast. And they know that. And we're not we're not like anybody else. We're gonna well we are everybody. We are gonna be in fear of him and we're gonna have problems with him and we're gonna be bullied by him at the back. And the way we're playing right now, all I would want to see right now is that every man turns up and puts their all. That's all I want from that game. Every man puts their all. You do that We've got our chance. We every, everyone will get a moment. Everyone gets a moment. However, I'm not saying saying we're going to get a result. I just want every man there to give me their all. Give me their all, and let's see what happens. Give us a game. Let's not get yeah. crazy. Let's go. Let's not get Eric Dyer crazy. Let's just focus yeah. and play the game. Or, or Jaffa go, taking it crazy. Or yeah, let's point. not do that one. Yeah. Let's, just, yeah. let's just give our all, and then we've got a chance. I totally agree. I mean, actually, Nuno commented in, ahead of that game and he also just referred and reflected on the game which we just had against um, Stade Rene. He said it was a hard thing to play, but the attitude was good. A lot of players playing out of a position. It's hard to properly judge them. Um, again, it's interesting to see how we'll approach this Chelsea game. Bear in mind, he may be in that situation where this player is playing out of position. He said on the injuries to Lucas Moura and Stephen Bergvine that they're really painful. Too early to say ahead of Chelsea. The physios are working with them. And he just says overall that it's just been, it has been terrible. I mean, listen, I mean, he has been really unlucky when it comes to injuries. Now you boys have picked up on the fact that he hasn't had his first choice 11 out so far. He says, we don't know if they'll be fit. Of course, we know we've got Romero, Sanchez, and of course, uh, Lo Celso. They're coming back one day before Chelsea. Now, there is an argument to be made that maybe in Croatia, you had Sanchez and, um, yeah, obviously Romero. you had, you had Sanchez and Romero both out there working yeah. together. There is that argument. Do you actually play them together on the basis they wouldn't have been involved in terms of team tactics with the overall team, but as a duo, they would have been working together. That's one aspect you look at it. I mean, Jace, your face there. <laughs> I'm looking at Jace's face. He looks so confused. If I've, I've just come up there with some kind of you know, mental maths stat there. Is, is is that beyond realms of possibility, Jace? Because you look no. at the team at the moment, Bergvine is not sure. Maury, you're not sure. Son, you're not sure. I mean, no, 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 no. Uh, what, are we, no. what are we going to do, Jace? All I, all I mean, Rick, is yes, they've been they've been in uh, Croatia, but they've been working together as a two. I mean, who's been taking corners for them? Who's been trying to play through balls between them to, the to get that coach, understanding? That's the, that's I mean, the coach you know, it's, they, they can't see the whole game going around. It's not like they've been together with the rest of the team in Croatia. So, I mean, I don't know what kind of training sessions you could have in terms of patterns of play for Chelsea when there's there's literally only three of you there. So, I think the fact they've been together, I, I just don't see that as relevant. 
um, you might well have to throw them in because, well, Tanganga's suspended. Uh, if Eric Dyer's not fit, one of those two, Sanchez or Romero, certainly has to play, don't they? Um, I don't know what we do at the back. Um, yeah. Against, you know, against, the, against the scariest striker in the league, we've got no idea who's playing uh, at centre-back. And you add on that as well, Joe Roden's just played 90 in this Europa Conference League game. And it's a guy that, let's, let's be honest, Joe Roden, he has not played a single minute of competitive football all summer in the build-up to that game. And again, no. now, like, like Tom says there, he's playing against Lukaku, who is literally thriving, thriving for goals. You know what? So I hungry. actually think Roden would love it. You the reckon? mentality let's, of the let's... player that I'm seeing, I think he'd absolutely mm. love it. The one thing about I don't know if we would. <laughs> the one thing about Roden, Roden made his debut, didn't he? For us at Stamford Bridge. Bridge. Yeah, yeah, played really well last year. Play, so, yeah, but Lukaku's a different level. Uh, yeah. Lukaku's a quality of goal that Lukaku scored at the moment. It's it's mm. impressive. You know, we we used to take the Mickey out of his first touch and things like that at Man United, yeah. but. The bloke has a now. serious goals record wherever he's. But even his goal record at Man United wasn't exactly, was it? No, it wasn't poor. You know, no. fifty odd goals in ninety games. It's not like he was was like Torres at Chelsea was. So he certainly mm. was better than Vincent Jansen at Tottenham. So you know, uh, we're not we're not going through our striker record, Jace. We've got to try and cheer him up. down. You kind of think <laughs> everything that could go wrong for us at Palace went wrong. Yeah. And we need that exactly flipped the other way. We we kind of need an early injury to Rudiger. We need them to break down. We need VAR to disallow a goal for them that they score by a millimetre. We need, you know, we 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 need everything to go in our favour. Can we can we get a result? We saw that in Manchester City. If we if we go with everything, there's a possibility because I think we will get one big chance in the game. We got a hope that right. chance falls for Kane and we yeah. take it. And then we've got to hope that everything goes well for us at the other end and Lukaku does have an off day. I mean, he will not score in 38 Premier League games. He won't do. So you need that that little bit of fortune to go your way. But it's, you know, it's, there's no doubt about it. We're underdogs and it's backs to the wall time, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Tom, just coming around to you, I mean, they had a comfortable 3 0 win against Aston Villa last weekend. Um, that took Chelsea to 10 points for a possible 12 in the league so far. And that was then backed up by a real hard-fought 1-0 victory over Zenit this past Tuesday in the Champions League. At the moment, they've got very few injury problems going into the game. I think at the moment, N'Golo Conte is likely to be available, although wide man Christian Pulisic is missing with an ankle problem. What, what, for you, Tom, overall, where is this game won and lost? <laughs> well, I'm trying to say with a straight face. Yeah, uh, well, I, I'll be honest with you. I think it's won by them and lost by us. That's the easy one. Look at it, I guess. No, I'm joking. Look, look. I, I, I think Jason's right. Like we, we've got, it's got to be, a, it's got to be a freak game for us to to beat them in any way. You know, convincingly. I think it, Sunny's going to be a big miss in games like this because really it's going to be about the transition, catch them, catch them on the break hit them with pace and, and get in behind is the only way that you can really conceivably see us getting a goal, I, I think. Um, and we don't have him. So I find it very difficult to see where the goal is going to come from. Even if Kane plays, like who's who's passing it to him? You know, where's that ball coming from? We're not going to have pressure around their box. We're not going to have, you know, any kind of press. We're not going to, uh, you know, give them, uh, their defenders much to worry about for any kind of length of time, I don't think. So it, it's catching them. And breaking at pace, and honestly, I, I, you know, I can't see where that kind of incisiveness is going to come from. I mean, the the game that I think of that worries me most, actually, for Chelsea, was when they went to Anfield because they should have won that game. Yeah, you know, if they hadn't have had that red card, I think they would have beaten Liverpool at Anfield, and that's a damn hard thing to do, right? Uh, for for anyone, um, and they were the better side. They were by far the better side, I thought. And so I saw that game, and after that. Uh, you know, after after it finished, I remember thinking, I, I reckon they're going to do the league this year because I thought that's, you know, they're a good side. So, yeah, not looking forward to it, honestly. Um, it'll have to be, uh, as Jason says, everything's got to go for us. Everything's got to go against them. Um, and then we might we might nick it. I, I think that our best hope in it really is for a draw. If we if we dig in and, you know, we're very, very compact and very well organised, we might give them a hard day and and you know and and stop them from scoring, but yeah, not feeling good, mate. Not feeling oh, good. I, I, and I hate losing to Chelsea. I, 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 Absolutely I, I, I hate do, it. 
this I do think of this, you know, this this pessimism was exactly the same going into City on the first game. This is true. What you're so right. You, you are right. That is true. You know, yeah. Pain, Pain's gonna leave yeah, us, yeah. and it's all gonna be bad. And you know, you know, all the all the whole thing about the seventy-two manager surge. It was all going out the window. And I think, like Darren, you picked up on it. it it's moments that define games, and that Son moment, that City game, defined it. And we, do you know what I find with Tottenham, and it's one of those things that when we've got something to actually fight for and prove a point, we've shown what we can do it. And again, this game here is one of those where it won't be a source of motivation because Chelsea are probably one of the teams expected to win the league. So you've already got that in the bank in terms of motivation. That should already be there. You can maybe question that in the case of Palace and maybe the Wolves games. Out, okay, it's teams that really do these players want to go out there and showcase their talent and such. But it, it's Premier League. I think every player playing in the Premier League wants to go and showcase that talent. I might be wrong. Darren, let's come to predictions. Um, I'll come to you first. I should have come to Darren last week. The optimism he's given on this show. What am I doing to myself? Let, let's start with Darren. Let, let's mean. Let's go as we mean to go on. Darren, what are you going to go for? I'm going one 0 One 0 I'm going one 0 One 0 I'm going one 0 Who scores for Spurs, Darren? It's not an own goal, is it? No, no, no. <laughs> Kane, Kane's going to get one. I, I feel okay. it. I feel it in the waters. Kane's getting one. Is one this Spurs coming back to get a point, or are we going to concede? I what, think what it's going to be us getting the goal first, right? And then Lukaku does what he does. Okay, and we hang on yeah. for a nervous point, do we? We and we no, we hang on well. We hang on well. Okay, and we'll then Rodan Rod- Rod- will hang on to him at every corner, <laughs> every cross, and Quite we will literally. hang on. Literally, hang on. <laughs> Quite literally, hanging on all of them on the goal literally. line would surprise me. We'll um, do it. We'll do it. Love it, Tom. Let's come around to you, Tom. Tom, what are you going for? Well, look, I, I, I can't, I can't put a Tottenham defeat because obviously, I. I yeah, I love Spurs. Um, you're so making your, I'm, your I'm, debut I'm, as well. You can't be doing it on your debut as well. No, exactly. Look, I'm, I'm going to go I've done this, I'm gonna go, Tom, I'm I've go done this show for a long time and I'm going for a defeat. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go nil though. I say we, we're just going to shut up shot. It's going to be what I... What I our best case scenario is it's a boring as fuck get. Sorry, I'm allowed to swear. I don't know if anyone's swore. You've yet. just done it, so that way absolutely fine. Right. Go yeah, for yeah. It. It's, it's gonna be a, what I want is a boring as fuck game where nothing yeah. happens and nobody scores, and then we survive and then we can move on. That's what I'm going you're, for. You're That's my prediction. Though, we're gonna win the game nil nil. There'll still be people that are criticizing. Why have we got no goals? Why is it so poor? I know, yeah, look, yeah, I, probably I probably will. I probably will. This style of football's um, rubbish. Okay, yeah, so is yeah. it is it an, opt- is it an optimistic nil nil? Great Optimistic, no, no. <laughs> yeah. back to the yeah, walls. That's, that's my best case. That's my best case scenario. Everyone on the everyone on the goal line to see out a draw. Jace, they said it with you. What, what can you see happening, Jace? What does your heart on your head tell you on this one? Well, one thing that we can't do is what we've done in both the past two years: is gift a penalty at home because we had Gazaniga. Gazaniga's karate chop on William, didn't we? Oh, two years yeah. Ago. Yeah. And we had Eric Dyer flattening, was it Timo Werner last year when he didn't need to? So, yep. you know, this is what I mean. When you play teams like that, you can't give out Christmas presents to them. Yep. You need everything to go your way. You need to benefit from a stupid decision. We can't have Kieran Trippier's back pass going past Hugo. Remember when Jan Vertonghen slipped over and hit a back pass? Who was that to? Was it, uh, I don't know. We lost that game. We ended up losing yeah. it four yeah. nil, didn't we? With an yeah, own goal yeah. and things. Yeah, like it that. all fell the apart. Times, yeah, the yeah. times we do that, and particularly the times we do that in a Chelsea fixture, is is ridiculous. And unlike the Arsenal game where they won comfortably two nil, they never declare against us, Chelsea, do they? They just think it's Tottenham. Let's grind their noses in it even more. So yeah. Yeah. you know, I, I do fear it. I'll, if I'm honest, I'll be looking on the betting coupon doing a 2 0 Chelsea win as as putting my money on that. But as, know, a, as, an, insur- as an insurance policy, it's, it's, I always do it as an insurance policy. I had Ren to win tonight as an insurance policy. You never want to claim on the insurance, but you do want some compensation for a miserable night, don't you? That's, that's, that's my thinking of it. Um, but, uh, and believe you me, I'm far happier losing the money than I am when I'm getting paid out. But, but no, seriously, it depends if, everything on goes our way, if everything goes our way and we raise our game like we did the first game, it's possible we could nick something. But mm-hmm. my heart my heart says we can nick something, but my head realistically says I think Chelsea will come and win 2-0 and it will be quite a comfortable win for them. OK, well, listen, we've got all that to come. Let me uh, say a wonderful thank you. Um, We've got two great debuts in tonight. If only we got our debuts were as good as some of the some, some signings we've had over the past couple of years. My God, let me say a, a great thank you firstly to 
actor Darren Hartman. Darren, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. We've got to get you back on throughout the season. Whenever you're ready, mate. Uh, it's been a joy and a pleasure. Gentlemen, you're all stars. Best shot. Oh, you're a diamond. Thank you so much. And also, brilliant Tom. Thank you so much. It's Joe, you know I've got to say, it is tough coming on generally, but to come and make your debut on a Europa Conference League night, that takes some topping. So thank you so much. <laughs> no worries. Thanks for having me on. It's uh, It's been fun. Lovely. It's, we'll it's, been, it's been good from both both new boys. And don't forget, boys, you get three years to settle into this at Tottenham. You, know? <laughs> you, know, you can be inconsistent for the first couple of years and we'll still love you. But by the third year, you've got to start up in your game then. That's it what is, it is. It's, what is it? it's yeah. Project Tottenham, right? Project Tottenham, we said yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah. Project yeah. Tottenham. Project working on the training pitch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, if I'll do. turn it. Chase, thank you as always. It's, uh, it's, it, you know, it has been, as a start, it's one of those things where, you know, you had that optimism from the start and now we're kind of sinking into reality. It's going to take time, like we've all just said. And I think it's one of those things that as Spurs fans, we're not great at being patient. But um, it is early days. We've got a huge game to come this weekend where if Spurs do beat Chelsea, suddenly that feel-good factor is back around the football mm-hmm. club. I think we need Everyone's to... up. Yeah. And I think we do need to kind of try and have that as the forefront of our mind and try and show on a positive. So, uh, Jace, thank you so much as always. That's all right. When am I next on? Is it the next checker trade game? Uh, yeah, we've got you. Booked. I think we've got you booked in. Uh, we're going to put you up in a travel lodge for. Is it? What's the next one coming up? Oh, I'll have to look at the fixtures. It's, it's, isn't it uh, awful? I've not even looked at the groups. Mo- I think. Is it Mora? Lucas Mora's play. Yeah, we're playing yeah, Lucas Mora. Yeah, we're playing Lucas Mora. Yeah, we're playing against we've, eleven Lucas Mora's. So um, we've played a headache tablet tonight, and now we've got Lucas Mora to play against. Right. Okay. I mean, the good news is right. eleven men that's not looking up, so you might have a chance in that game. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, let me just say that's a wonderful thank you to the brilliant Tom Edwards. We've had Darren Hartman, we had the great Jason McGovern on. Thank you so much for joining us live on YouTube. We have over 500 of you watching us live. Thank you so much for all of your support. We are back after Chelsea for better or for worse. But most importantly, as always, keep safe, keep well. And as always, 